Let's see how we can use those booleans we've been learning about. Let's see how if and else statements work. Alright, welcome back to the Java introduction for Minecraft and Hytale modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at if and else statements. So now we're basically going to be supercharging your ability to program in a way that is actually going to be pretty insane. Because as soon as you have if and else statements, you're going to be really, really powerful. So that's like one of the tools which is incredibly important to have in your toolbox. And the if and else statements are... Well, we're going to see, I have already prepared two integers right here, exam one and exam two, basically just representing sort of, you know, point totals in two exams that you might have written. And now what we can do is we can type an if, right? And then I can put in a parentheses and the if statements takes in a Boolean into it. So now you might be saying, well, why are we having integers here? Well, wait a second. We have seen the comparison operators and we can say something like exam one is equal, uh, bigger or equal to 50. And then I put in these curly brackets here. As soon as I type in enter, a second curly bracket will then generate right here. And everything that is inside of here will only execute if this is true. So we can, for example, say something like system.out.println, you have passed exam one. Now we now know that this is not the case. We have not passed exam one. However, we can then just also say, well, wait a second, how about else? So we can type in else, and then once again, a curly bracket. And then as soon as I hit enter, a second curly bracket will generate right here. And then I'm just going to copy this over, uh, select it, control C, control V, and then I can say you have failed exam one. And now if I run this, this is going to happen because now the really crazy thing is, if this is true, everything here will happen. If this is false and we have an else statement, then everything here will happen. Pretty crazy, but really, really powerful because hopefully with everything that we've seen before, including something like the inputs, where we can actually input something into the console and have it read out. And then now we can sort of manipulate it, take a look at you know whether or not it is equal to something, bigger or something. Now we're... Now we're really going into interesting territory. So let's just run this. And as you can see, you have failed exam one. Well, what a shame, but it is what it is. Now what we can do is I can just copy the entire thing here, right? So select everything here, control C and then control V right here. And then I'm just going to change this to exam two, because of course this is exactly the same, right? If this is bigger or equal to 50, we have then passed exam two or we have failed exam two. Now, in our case, of course, once again, we know what this is, but we're just going to see this once again. You have passed exam two. So as you can see, this is sort of the idea here. Now, what is also interesting, the else statements, you can actually chain those. So in theory, I can say else and then I can say if and then put another if statement in here. So I could say, for example, exam two is now. We know that this is already false if we're here. Right. So then I can say for something like, for example, if this is smaller than zero, uh, then this happens. And then this happens if this is also false. So this would be failed here. And then in here, I actually would want to put in something like, how did, how did you get negative points? Right. So something like that. So if I now have this one to be negative one, now this should be done because exam two is now smaller than zero, but it is also not bigger or equal 50. Now, of course, in this case, that makes sense because it can't be bigger than 50 and smaller than zero. Obviously, this is sort of to narrow it down a little bit more. Let's just put this in and then you can see how did you get negative points? Of course, not quite what we want. So let's just keep this at 51 for the time being. So that's uh, something I also wanted to show you that you can basically say if and then else if and then else and then else if, if you, you know, you can basically put this in as often as you want. The last one then always has to be an else. It doesn't necessarily have to be an else. You can also just put this like this, you know, however, you can't just now put an if in here that doesn't quite work. So um, if you put an if in here, then it's just a new if statement, basically. So that's something to be thinking about. And now what we can also do, for example, is something like exam one is this, right? So if this is uh, bigger or equal than 50 and exam two, 
is bigger or equal bigger or equal than 50 right so now if i now copy this one again then i can say i have passed both exams because we remember this the and operator right returns a normal boolean and the comparison operators also return a boolean so we can use all of them together in one fell swoop basically so this then also just works where if I, for example, now have actually, that was a mistake. I actually have 65 here. I run this. Now, all of a sudden, you've passed both exams. Because both of them are true. And therefore, this gets executed as well. So that's really cool. The if and the else statements really just open up a, like, a, so many possibilities to do cool things. Like, it's actually insane. And what we can basically also take a look at, just for the sake of argument, is we can... Basically, once again, copy the thing from the scanner, right? Once again, we don't really care about what is happening here, right? We've just said, hey, we, we know that we need this for the scanner. And then what we can then say, for example, is we can actually put this at the very top here, right? And then instead of using these two, we can just put in, well, whatever the person maybe says, right? Maybe this is a professor and they are putting in the exam results, basically. So we can say then next int and then next int, right? So Something like this. Now, of course, we should best basically put this in as well here. Some just making this a little bit nicer. Uh, results for exam one, right? And then the same thing copying this for here, for exam two. So something like this. And now if I run this, look at this, right? Now it's actually waiting for me to type this in. So I'm gonna say, oh well, this is you know, 69. And then I can type in the results for exam two. Oh, that's only a 12, sadly. And then look at this. You've passed exam one. You've failed exam two. And this has not been printed out. So that really is actually amazingly cool. And I hope that you kind of agree with this. Because now we're really starting to... You can see that now you can actually build something. You can build a program. You can interact with the computer. And the computer does different things depending on how you interact with it. And this is pretty much the basis of any game or program or literally anything that is happening. So I really hope that this sort of illustrates the point that if statements, the if statements and the else statements, incredibly useful, used like in, in so many different ways. Like if we wouldn't have those, I mean, programming would just like be not possible probably even. So they are an incredibly important and sort of atomic part of this. So they're really, really important. So if you run into any issues, if there's something that's not quite understandable, please do feel free to leave me a comment and I'll answer the best I can. Um, however, this would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.